Hey gang, welcome to your 8th OAuth tutorial and in this video I'm going to talk a little bit more about the redirect URI. Alright, so then, in this video I want to talk about a couple of things. First of all, this authorised redirect URI which is currently set to whatever. So we'll talk about that in a minute and also I want to talk about how we can actually kickstart the passport setup so that we can start the authentication process because at the minute although we've kind of set passport up here in this file and we've added these keys so that yes when we want to we can use the google api to authenticate users we're not actually doing anything with this code at the minute it's not even executing at all all right so we're going to talk about how we can kickstart this authentication process as well but first of all let's go back to this redirect uri what is this well, I'm just going to bring up this diagram once again. I remember this flow at this point right here where a user is granting permission for us to use their credentials. And that permission screen looks like this, remember? So at that point, when a user clicks allow, what we're doing is redirecting back to our server to a custom redirect URI. So this thing right here is this thing right here. Where do we want the redirect to go after a user clicks allow? Google needs to know that, all right? So instead of whatever right here, we're gonna delete that if we can. So get rid of that. And we're gonna to go to forward slash auth, forward slash Google, because we're authenticating using Google. And in the diagram, I said CB for callback, but now I've decided I wanna call this redirect. It just sounds better, more logical. So let's save that now. And now Google knows on here that when a user clicks allow on that, um, consent screen they know where this application should redirect to now this is not the only place we have to add in that redirect location we also have to add it in the setup of this Google strategy right here as another option down here so let's do that so this is called callback URL and this is a string so we need to pass through the same string so forward slash auth forward slash Google forward slash redirect only this time we don't need to add in the local host port 3000 at the start it automatically knows where it is okay so it's just going to go from the root and then this address right here which is going to be the same as this all right so now we have that property inside the google strategy as well don't forget your comma and by the way i've just noticed i've added this parenthesis right here when it doesn't need to be there because that's just one parameter this object of the Google strategy. The second parameter is this thing right here. So we don't need this parenthesis, which was there initially. Okay, so get rid of that. Okay, so let's save this file now. We've added in this redirect. So we're going to create that route later on in auth routes. But for now, I want to talk about how we can kickstart this authentication process. So at the minute, this kind of probably doesn't really make sense anything that we're doing. We're just setting up Passport, we're adding in this callback URL, the client ID, the client secret, you know, setting up this API online, and we're not doing anything with this code. So at the minute, if we go to login and we click this Google Plus, all we're doing is we're going to forward slash auth, forward slash Google, and displaying this message. We don't want to do that. If we open up this diagram again, what we've done is we've clicked this button and we've gone to forward slash auth, forward slash Google, as per this, right? And we've handled that route over here in Node.js. And you can see that if we go to auth routes, it's this thing, right? Forward slash auth, forward slash Google. And we're sending this message back. But at this point, we don't just want to send a message back to the user saying logging in with Google. We want to interact with Google, send them over to that consent screen so that a user can log in and say, yes, okay, this application can use my details. So it's this process we want to focus on now. We want to kickstart this authentication process. And Passport is going to help us do this, right? So instead, right here, of just sending this response, logging in with Google, instead of that, we want to handle this section with Passport so that it goes to the consent screen. So how are we going to do that exactly? Well, it's pretty simple. All we need to do is get rid, first of all, of this junk, right? The second parameter. And so now we just have this router.get forward slash Google for the first parameter. The second parameter now is going to be passport.authenticate. Now to use passport, we first need to import it. So I'm going to say at the top, const passport is going to be equal to a require passport. 
and now we can use it down here. So when a user goes to forward slash auth forward slash Google, we want Passport to take control to interact with Google and send it to the consent screen. And the way we say we want Passport to do that is by saying Passport dot authenticate, which is a method. And this method is going to take a parameter. Now, how do we want to authenticate the user? We want to use the Google strategy that we've set up, right? So we can say Google. So when we set this Google strategy up right now, we're attaching it to the passport object, right? And we're importing this passport object in right here. And it's got that Google strategy associated with it. So when we say Google in here, it knows to activate the Google strategy to authenticate someone and it's going to redirect them to the Google uh, consent screen, if you like. All right. So that there is the first parameter, this thing, Google, in this authenticate method. We're telling it which service we want to use to authenticate or which strategy. So the second parameter right here is going to be an object. And inside this object, we're going to declare the scope property. And the scope property is basically telling Passport what we want to retrieve from the user's profile. Do we want just the profile information or their emails or other information? And all that goes into an array. Now, I just want the profile information. So we pass that into a string. But if you wanted other stuff, you could copy, uh, comma separate them and add them in. All right. So the Google API is going to give you all the information about the different things you can pop in here. I'm just going to put in the profile. So if I save this now, we have this route set up so that when someone goes to forward slash Google, uh, forward slash auth, forward slash Google, Passport is going to take control and send them to the consent screen. And it's going to say, we want your profile information. Would you allow this app to get it? All right. But it's not going to work just yet. So if I save this at the minute, then if I try to go to forward slash or forward slash Google, then we're going to get an error. It says unknown authentication strategy, Google. Now, this is because this code right here is not running. Yeah, we've created the code. But nowhere in this application is this code actually running. We don't kickstart it when we say Nodemon app. This code is running, but not this. So in order to get this running, what we need to do is require it from here. And if we require it, then it's going to run over here on the right. Make sense? So I'm going to go back to app.js and say const and call this passport setup and set it equal to a require and inside we want to say dot forward slash for the current directory, then go in the config directory, then get the passport hyphen setup file. OK, so now we've required that in app.js so that when app.js runs, it says, hey, I need to require this dude over here, this file. It goes into it and it runs the file. So now this Google strategy is associated to this passport object. So therefore, in auth route, auth routes, it knows what this Google thing is now. It knows about that Google strategy because that code is now run. Make sense? All right, so if we save this again, let's go back and try refreshing first of all. Then I'm going to log in using Google again. This time, it's redirecting me to that consent screen and it's saying, choose an account. I can use the Net Ninja or another account, all right? So let's see what happens. I'm going to say the Net Ninja. Hmm. Now it's trying to redirect me after I've logged in with that account. So right now we've said in the passport setup that we want to redirect to here. I've gone through the authentication with Google, the consent screen. I've said I want to log in with the Net Ninja, and it's trying to redirect me to this URL right here, forward slash auth, forward slash Google, forward slash redirect. And that currently is up there, but it doesn't exist. It's not there yet. Right, we don't have this handler for it. So in order for this to work and for it to redirect correctly, we need to create this handler. So let's do that underneath this. We'll say in a comment, first of all, callback route for Google to redirect to. OK, and then we'll say router dot get and it's going to be forward slash Google forward slash redirect. Remember, auth is automatically placed in front of it because we specify that right here. So it's forward slash auth, forward slash Google, forward slash redirect. Then what we want to do is take the request and the response object and fire a function when someone reaches this route. 
and inside here all we're going to do is send a message we'll say response dot send and we're going to send them a message which says you reached the call back uri okay so let's see if this works once again if i now go back and sign in with the net ninja then we can see you reached the callback uri so this is now working we've now authenticated with google and we've said to passport and our application look yeah this user is allowing you to access their information now i said before over here that when we grant permission and we redirect over here we get information sent to us right that is not strictly true what we get sent to us is a code right here you can see after redirect we have this query string which says the code is equal to this thing over here so this is a code that google is sending to us right and at this point we have access to that code and passport can use that code to interact with google to then grab the information that we want okay so it doesn't come back automatically with the information but passport can then access that information so what we're going to do in the next tutorial is talk about this a little bit more and the next step in the flow which is going to be all to do with this passport callback function right here so we'll talk about that in the next video